Hi, I'm Limo Milan. In this video, we're going to look at the Ableton Live beta and take a preview and look at the highlights of the new features. Let's first take a look at some linked track editing. So this is basically the ability for us to be able to highlight multiple tracks that are generally going to be associated with each other and edit from just one of the lanes and have all the other tracks follow in unison. So I've got multiple drum takes here. It could be electronic like I've got here, or it could be multi-mic drum recordings that you do this with as well. Um, and basically choose link tracks and then you get this little link icon here. And then let's just play this and I'll play around with editing one of the lanes and you'll see what happens uh, across the other lanes. Okay, so that's quite nice in the respect that it's a really easy way to do all these different tracks here. And I suppose once I'm done, I can quite easily just unlink those again and then do more custom individual editing to the tracks too. So the next feature we're going to look at is the new scales mode, which was previously you'd have to either use the scales device or fold a track with all the notes in for the given scale. Now what we can do is just select an actual scale mode here, choose the, the root position that we're going to go for, and then we can select the actual type of scale. So I'm going to go for minor. So let's go for G. So let's try and make some chords. volume down a bit. Okay, so just selecting the scales here and so on seems really easy on this. I'm going to actually just bring in a new MIDI track and let's try the same feature, but let's do an ARP line as well and just kind of explore that as a method of inputting. So get a new instrument loaded up. Go into the editor. We're still on a G minor scale, so that's come across as well. And then let's find somewhere to do our wrap. So it's keeping it within the scale as we do our duplicates and transposition as well as we work. So let's just tighten that up so it fits alongside what's going on in the track. Okay, so that's the new scales feature. Now let's continue working on this track, looking at the new note probability and randomize functions. So I still got my art that I had earlier on, and I just had an idea to test out the actual probability factor. So if we bring up the probability lane here, every note has the option of choosing whether it will definitely play or have a less likely probability of playing. So if I actually just hide that for a minute, I have the idea of just filling in the gaps in between my art pieces here. So I'll just copy these notes across and just fill in every gap here. Just using the blue marker at the top and the, the left and right arrows here just to move the notes around and Command and D to quickly create a new note. If I fill in all the gaps, I'm thinking if I put the probability to a less likely value in between the gaps, I'll still have the rhythm I've already written that I liked, but I'll occasionally have these smaller sort of interim notes that can fill in the gaps as well. So I think the end of it 
looks like it just has two notes at the end there. So if I just click the actual piano key there to hide it more, bring up the probability, and then I'll bring down the probability, so that's the velocity, I'll put bring down the probability for the highlighted notes only, so they're less likely to play. And let's put it less than 50%, so it's more than sort of every other that is more likely to play. So let's try this out. And let's try and find a good kind of note for these to all play. So that works really well. I'm going to do Command and D whilst I've highlighted all of the projects so far, just to quickly extend that, because I'm going to get a lot more out of that idea because of the probability changing as it plays through the cycle. So that can play for longer now. And let's have a look at the randomize factors here as well. So just um, going to hold Shift and click the two clips and do Command and J to glue those together, so just so they're all in one clear view down here. And then we do have a randomize velocity function here. I'm just going to make sure I'm loading in a sound for this instrument that's going to definitely respond to velocity values. So let's just uh, get a sound that's a sort of a blippy sound or something. So once I start randomizing this velocity, we should have a lot of uh, tonal change that can change across. So let's just randomize velocity, uh, make sure we can see velocity just so we see what happens. Okay, so that's a lot more random in terms of what's going on. Let's see how that sounds. Okay, so that works really well. I've done probability there to just create more non-repeatable variation in terms of when these notes do and don't play, the ones that were sitting in between my main rhythmic pattern, and then also playing around with the randomized function and change the velocity so there's a lot more expression, again, of that programmed in MIDI information. Now we're going to look at the MPE features or MIDI polyphonic expression. So if you have a MIDI polyphonic expression based MIDI controller, you can input data into Ableton Live and edit it. In my case, I'm just going to use the programming tools to do this too. But you can do things like slides per note and you can do bends per note and all sorts of data that's usually not able to be unique per note that's in your, your MIDI editor. And a few of Ableton Live's instruments now support this too. So uh, Wavetable, Sampler and Simpler support this. So I'm going to use Wavetable and explore this in the context of this song that I'm making. So let's just solo this track out. It's just simple chords at the moment. And then this is the tab for the note expression area. And if I click into a note, you'll see that is the option of changing pitch bend information for each one of these notes. So let's say this bottom note here, if I click in a break point and then let's say slide it up a whole octave. So let's go to 12 semitones. I'm just going to hold shift so I can get some slightly more accurate details. I could probably do edit value there as well. So let's just do plus 12 and make it a rounded figure. So let's see what it sounds like. So I think I might need to en enable the uh, note pitch bend and let's change that to pitch and change it up to 12. Okay, so that's sounding interesting. So maybe let's not go for a whole octave. So it's a really nice discord and intro for the first chord and then I can go to the kind of normal tuning of the notes after that. But it, it gives me an idea if I go for another wavetable and, and leave those chords intact as they are. And let's go for some sort of a tone that can just be held as that first chord. So let's copy that across and move it over to the wavetable. 
go to the MPE section of Wavetable now and just have a look at the tuning and then let's see how it sounds like if I play around with that. Maybe it could be a drone actually. So I'll copy that original chord from the second repeat just so that returns back to normal quickly. And then let's try out some of this drone behavior that I have in that edited version. Just gonna highlight them all. Command and J again to make it an easy consolidated MIDI clip. And let's have a look at the MPE editor here again and see what values we can change. So we've got pressure and slide and back in Wavetable we can assign these uh, MPE uh, controllers to different things. So the slide controller can be set to oscillator position. So if I actually increase that to an upwards uh, movement, I should be able to move from this square-like waveform or this sawtooth waveform more to a square. So let's give that a go for this drone sound. So it's the slide, sorry, wrong MIDI clip. So the slide editor. And let's have a look at adding some values for this. So highlight a note. And then let's change it for this note. Go back to the editor for a minute. I'm solely on the wrong track, that's why I'm not hearing that. I'm sure this will be quite severe now. It's quite different, so let's pull that down. And let's just go for this being around about the same position it was and use that slide position. And we can hear, we can hear that slide bringing in the other tone there. Let's try it for a different note because it is unique per note. That's the whole point of this. So I can start this note off to be a different tone. So it's like a crossfade between two notes doing two different tones. It's a really nice uh, ability to be able to do that. It's very sound designy stuff that would normally take sort of parallel use of instruments and make one of them do one thing and the other. We can do it all within one instrument and control, you know, the, the timbre of the different notes. It's really good. So that's looking at MPE from a programming point of view, but don't forget if you have a compatible MPE controller like the Roly Seaboard, we can use pressure and slide in the keys to control those in real time and make it a really expressive form of control. Also, Ableton Live does support third-party plugins that allows you to use MPE too, so it will open up as more and more tools are supporting this type of standard. Okay, so moving on to another new feature is the comping or compiling function that we can do now. So previously, when you've recorded in a loop style, you've been recording one long file, which has then been available to access in, in different sort of ways. What um, Ableton Live uh, Beta now can do is we can record a vocal and it will be recorded down to different lanes. And then afterwards we can audition the different parts of the different takes and make a compiled version of that vocal. So I've got a microphone set up here and I'm just gonna kind of play the song a little bit and try and just sing some notes so I can then audition the best version of me singing those notes and make a compiled best take. Oh. Right, so I've done a few attempts at some ideas um, whilst I've been singing over the track. Now I'm going to just go into solo mode and then what we do is we go show take lanes and then our three takes in this case all show. So the first thing I can do is go to an audition take lane so I can just have a quick listen to each individual repeat around that loop. 
So let's go for the first take. Right, so there's some there's good bits in there, I think, but there's some bits obviously where I'm, I'm probably could do with a few more attempts at doing that. So as an experimental approach, I'm going to use the pencil tool. So I'm going to press B. And what you can basically do is you can draw in the portions of each take that you want to have compiled to the top track, which is our actual um, combination of those different takes. So I came in late on that first take, so I definitely want to start with maybe the second take. And let's just hold command so it's not on the grid for a minute. And let's have that as my first part. Um, and I'm not too sure for the next part, so I might just drag that there for a minute. And then definitely the last take, I wasn't too happy about trying to go in the higher notes. Um, I didn't hit those so well. So let's just draw in this for our last portion here. And, and maybe just let that take continue through for the rest of that. So let's see what it sounds like. Uh, 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 e uh. Okay, that's, that's not bad. That uh, timing on that one's a little bit off with the ending of the uh, take before. So if I take B off, when we go down here, let's just, maybe just move this a little bit. And then if we split, let's put the marker here. We'll put the split command here. Uh, do a split there. And then I can split there too. And actually just move the recording back a touch and then just make sure that this one is actually in the right position so that takes over at the right time too. So that, yeah, that looks looks right. Let's have a, a quick listen. In fact, that is actually uh, not quite over to the next lane at the right time. So basically if it's in the light brown or the same color as the track, shall I say, at the top, which is our combination track, that's the portion that will be allowed to play through across the, in this case, the three options. Uh, uh... So let's have a look at consolidating this as a final take. And then what we can do is just get rid of those earlier source recordings that we used to make this final take. So let's listen to this in context with the whole piece. Okay, so I'm happy with that for now. I'm going to explore the effects in a minute and, and try those on there as well. So the timing issues that I've got with the edit that I've gone for aren't too much of an issue. So next we're going to look at the new devices and starting with the new hybrid reverb. So this is a combination of both algorithmic reverb and convolution based reverb. So previously we've had Ableton standard stock native reverb, which is algorithmic, meaning that the space that's created is all synthetic based on maths. And then we've had the Max for Live Convolution Reverb, which generates reverb based on actual recordings of real spaces. So hybrid reverb is a combination of these two approaches, but they're not necessarily the same reverbs put together. So if we actually go to the um, menu down here, we can choose the algorithmic reverb on its own. And let's put that on our vocal track that we were working on before. So if I go to here and solo it out and just go for dry first, and then we'll, we'll blend it in. So just as a comparative, if we go to audio, time and space and load up the original reverb and listen to that in its default state. 
They're both algorithmic, but there's a dramatic difference in tonal and, and density and so on as well. So let's just get rid of the, uh, the classic reverb for now. Let's bring the hybrid reverb back in. So um, we have the option of various presets that we can load in with the convolution. And we have the choice of one or the other or running them one after the other in series or running them side by side to be combined together in parallel as well. Um, so I'm going to go for series and experiment with the uh, settings of that. Oh. So this is a new feature that we have here, which is rather than doing pre-delay just in milliseconds, we can actually do it in a synchronized measurement based on the time of our, our project and the timing too. So like the original reverb, we do have a freeze function that we can use, uh, but of course this is a very different sounding reverb. So let's just explore that. So if we recorded that into another audio track right now, we could create these great soundscapes with this. So that's that's an interesting angle to take. It's not the one I'm going to take right now, but it's definitely got a nice uh, density and uh, tone to it. So uh, another interesting feature with this new uh, hybrid reverb is this vintage mode that we've got here too. So if I change it, it's basically going to alter the properties of the reverb to go to more of an older technology kind of crunchy, less high fidelity reverb. So let me just change that while we listen to this. So again, some interesting tones coming out of this and we have a built-in EQ now, so we can change that. And also uh, a handy feature now is we have a bass mono option here where we can just turn the bass area of the frequencies to be in unison in the left and right speakers so we don't have any movement going on down there which makes things sound a little bit muddy in a mix. So that's the hybrid reverb. So the next device we're going to look at is the Spectral Resonator and this has got a really interesting feature on it. It has like an internal mode based on its own tuning and we also have an external MIDI input we can do on this too. So I'm just going to play with the parameters first to get a scope for what it can do sonically and then we'll wire in a MIDI track and start feeding it some pitched notes, maybe even from the arpeggiator piece that I did before. Uh -huh. some really, really deep textures coming from that. So now let's have a look at the MIDI features. So if we switch it to MIDI mode, we can select its source for the MIDI data. And my track here, I'll rename it so it's a bit more clear on the menu system. This was my ARP, so let's rename it as ARP. And if I go back to my vocal recording, I can go to MIDI from and choose the ARP input from here. Let's see what it sounds like when I have the arpeggiator feeding the settings of the spectral resonator. And in 
this context, it's a really lovely sound that I'm getting from there. Again, it's it's something that can turn what was a vocal now into a, a vocal style kind of morphed sound that can run along that arp. So let's listen to those two together. <laughs> And there's a lot of possibilities with that with sort of bass design as well, being able to feed that into a combination of some sort of sound that you want to morph into a bass and feeding it the MIDI to control the, uh, the pitch and shape of that. So let's have a look at our spectral time as well, which is a delay based uh, version of the same kind of principles. So let's just drag this on here and let's uh, have an exploration into this. So that has a really nice kind of stereo soft feel to it as well. So that's a really useful tool in this context. So let's have a look at, yeah, so these are some of the devices that have had an update too. So I'm actually gonna stick Redux on my drums for a minute. I'll stick them on the kick and we'll listen to that. So Redux has had a few uh, extra features on here. Um, the key one is, a much more gradual ability to change the parameters. They're not as stepped as they were, so there's more increments. So I can do the bit depth as a normal kind of uh, value, but in terms of uh, down sampling, we can control this a lot easier. Or the sample rate, sorry. We also have a jitter control too, so we can make it less um, consistent and it will have a bit of a movement around the position I've got it. So the filters are really nice touch to be able to be in there and be able to control the, sh the sound itself. And then we also have a shaping tool so if we drop this down in bit depth for a minute. Yeah, there's a lot more accuracy in how we can tune in Redux now coming through here. So the other options we have in terms of new is we have a new chorus ensemble, which is a much deeper version of the original chorus with a couple of different multi-voice um, options. So I'm going to try it on a different sound because it doesn't make sense to do it on a kick. Let's try the ARP pattern. So the vibrato is nice in respect we can create that slow wavering old analog kind of drift to pitch and the ensemble's definitely got a really rich really rich tone to it as well lots of lots of layers of uh, a chorus effect going on there and then finally the phaser and the flanger are being combined now as well so if we drag that onto the same track after our chorus treatment let's explore that for a minute
It's interesting, it kind of, the doubler effects are reminding me a little bit of how grain delay can manipulate things, but it's a bit more controllable on this. And then the, the flanger seems to have a, a lot more sort of intricacy in terms of how it's doing the, the, the phase shifts uh, going on. So the phases doing the uh, intricacies and the phase shifts going on there as well. For the next part, I'm going to explore the new macro snapshots and the new features as well. So let's uh, find something to, to do the usual kind of macro control with. So, I mean, if you're not sure what this is, macros are usually the ability to map devices on your track to one destination, either just one that's maybe far away in the plugin chain and put it somewhere handy at the beginning of the track or multiple things all mapped to one dial. So you can do way more expressive movements um, with the macro system. And that's uh, dramatically improved here. So if I uh, group this uh, chain of devices by highlighting them with Command and A and then go to group, the macro system will start up here. So Macros themselves are revealed using the show hide button here. And then what's new is this show less and show more feature. So based on how many you want to see, and by the way, there's no longer a limit of eight. We have a limit of 16 now. So we can get a lot more into our uh, rack design. And then we have this snapshot function. So if I pull that up, the, the main point here is if we set up some macros, so I'm gonna first find three or four interesting parameters to change on this instrument as it plays. So I'll solo it out so we can hear it a little bit easier. And then as I find them, control click and map them to a macro. And then I can either leave the name that's there or just give it an independent name with a rename function. So I'm just calling that bright because that's what it was doing in terms of how it sounded. And there's a filter here. Let's see what that sounds like. Yep, that's going to be useful. So let's go and set that to macro two. And we'll call, actually filter frequency is fine for that one. And then if we go for a mount on the chorus, that would be useful. So we'll set that up there. And maybe we'll do a dual assignment. So we'll do the rate as well as the amount of the chorus. And what that will do is allow us to move both those values whilst we move just the one macro. So that's quite effective. Let's just call that a descriptive name. So I'm just going to put disturb in there because that's start sounding more disturbing. Okay, and Let's try the phaser and see what we can do with that. So that frequency amount, let's uh, set that to the fourth macro. So we've got the normal uh, map assignments that we can change the lowest and highest values of what the macros control of each parameter they're mapped to. Um, but we have this snapshot function. So if I click new, this can be renamed and I can call this my, you know, state one, how I want it to be generally in the tune. Then I can go around, change these positions and capture that as my second state. State two. Now these different snapshots can be deleted and duplicated as well, um, but we have a randomization function as well. So let's see what it comes up with in terms of randomization. That's a nice combination of the randomized settings. So let's go to new and we'll call this one Let's just call it bright because that's what it sounds like. So we can update the snapshot. If we make changes as we're tweaking our creations, we can go in and change these and then add that or overwrite it onto the current snapshot. Um, and we can also, if you remember, we can limit the amount of macros in view and make it a lot more manageable um, and not show unused macros as well. So that was macro snapshots and improvements. Let's have a look at the final key feature we're gonna focus on, which is the tempo follower. So this is new. Um, if we go to preferences, 
and go to the MIDI Tempo and Link tab, there's a new feature here called Show Tempo Follower. And if we reveal that, it will show up in the top left-hand corner. And what's unique about this is it has an audio input. And the whole idea is Ableton Live can now synchronize to the tempo of an external source. Now it could do this before, we could use MIDI data and it could synchronize, or we could use the Ableton Link protocol and synchronize between different pieces of software and hardware that can support that function. But now we can track someone who's playing the drums live, if the audio feed is going through to the microphone we've connected, someone could beatbox, or in this case, I can clap and create a rhythm and have Ableton Live follow me and track me. So I'm going to set it into follow mode and just grab this microphone. So Ableton Live was doing that offline while that was happening. This time I'm gonna do it while it's playing and it will start mapping as I change the tempo. So that was the new tempo follower features and it really opens up so many possibilities in terms of how Ableton Live can fluidly track a human playing an instrument or any kind of sound source that may not be accessible using the older methods of MIDI and Ableton Link. So that was some of the new features of the Ableton Live 11 Beta.